Columnist for Politico, Jonathan Martin, his latest piece is entitled Trump, the Front Runner." Not so fast. Explain what you're seeing playing out right now, Jonathan. Hey, Nika, I just think that the, the Trump is going to win or Trump's a lot conventional wisdom got a little out of hand the last couple of months. I think there's frankly some overcompensation from people who uh, aren't Trump fans but want to seem like they get it. They're 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 in touch with real America, kind of unlike perhaps they weren't in 2016. Uh, but the, 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 this assumption that he is a sure thing kind of doesn't fully factor in that Donald Trump is Donald Trump, and he's going to say and do things that are, that are going to be uh, detrimental to his own cause, and he's got an aptitude for self-sabotage, unlike any politician that we know, and that this is a sort of campaign that still has six months to go, and a lot can happen. Uh, there's known unknowns, and there's unknown unknowns, and uh, the idea that, that, that this is inevitable, Trump's coming back for a second term, I just don't think uh, is reflected in the data or the reality of Donald Trump, the politician we know. So, so Jay Mar, mm. Michael Steele here. Um, I, I, I found that 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 headline uh, an interesting one. Um, that you know, Trump may not necessarily be the front runner. You're, you're talking about in terms of the 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 race between him and Biden, or inside yeah. the party? Because I don't who's who's taking this this guy down inside the party. I think everyone's lined up. So yeah, who who if he's not the front runner, who is? No, in terms of the race between he and Biden, I mean. Okay, I mean, cool. All right, I just want because I was like front runner. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean tr Trump clearly is the dominant figure in the GOP. He has been for almost nine years now. That, that, that's unquestioned. Look, there's obviously a third of the Republican Party, the old guard, maybe some folks on this very show right now, Joe Scarborough, who are embarrassed <laughs> by Trump, who find Trump to be be uh, you know an appalling figure. But it's math. The one third is vastly outnumbered by the two thirds, and so. Trump clearly controls the GOP. But guys, he's always been a minority uh, political leader. He's never sniffed 50% of the vote in either election. And obviously, he's presided over losses up and down the ballot in his own party since 2017. So the idea that he's some political colossus is not reflected, obviously, uh, I don't think, in history or in the data today. Now, we all get it. This is an election of six states. Biden's coalition is tenuous. Biden's numbers are really bad, and he's going to have a huge challenge. But I just don't think the idea that, um, you know, David Cameron going to Mar-a-Lago, like, that wouldn't happen unless this conventional wisdom hadn't set in that Trump's a sure thing, you know? And, and Jamar, President Duda just two days ago met with Donald Trump, Trump in Tower. New York because yeah. Donald Trump is obviously here uh, sitting for that trial. Um, so yeah. what is your sense of the, the truth about the way the Trump campaign feels about this? Obviously, they always project confidence that we yeah. are the front runner. We're going to beat Joe Biden. Do they worry that as these trials go on, as we've seen in the last week, Donald Trump just kind of sitting powerless in a courtroom with more to come? Do they concern that that cuts into some of that confidence that they're projecting that they worry about it? Yeah. Yeah, and just real fast, by the way, on the, 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 the Duda meeting at Trump Tower, uh, I had a Western official tell me that the Trump world has actually encouraged the embassies to have uh, foreign leaders go visit Trump on his turf. So this is an active effort by Trump's advisors to get these foreign leaders to go see him because they like the image. They know what the image projects, Willie. Um, look, there's no question that, 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 that the Trump campaign can only control so much, right? They have a candidate who is really somebody who's going to do what he's going to do and say what he's going to say. So they have limitations in what they can do. If you saw the letter this week of him trying to create, Willie, his own NIL, a 5% cut, as they say in Philadelphia, getting a taste, um, you know, that kind of thing where you're trying to get a cut of down-ballot candidates who use Donald Trump's image in an ad is not the effort of a campaign that's trying to put together an organization in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. It's an organization that's trying to placate Donald Trump and and pick up some cash while they're doing it. So I think a lot of their time, Willie, is focused on keeping Mr. Trump happy. And when you're doing that, you're not putting together a winning campaign. Well, and he's just got to be miserable having to sit in court all day. So good luck.
Good luck trying to keep him happy. One can uh, imagine. Senior, <laughs> I, I don't even know what that's like. Uh, senior political columnist for Politico, Jonathan Martin, thank you so much. Always Thanks, good to Megan. have you on. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.